to ensure that we tidy up this thing, whereby the struggle continues. When I say the struggle continues is that they keep on talking on the media to let them know that, you know, we need, the media is key as well to all this issue. Most of the time, we don't get correct uh, information from the media. The information that we get from the media are doctored. And rumors abound. In a society where rumors abound, it is very deep. Um, um, it, it, it's very harmful. I think to... I'll, I'll like you to expatiate more on that. But uh, before that, let's go back to UK because you're trying to bring the UK example and you say teachers yeah. don't go on strike in yeah. UK. Uh, but uh, this is 2013. You remember in some uh, suburbs and some other areas in the yeah. UK, teachers called out a strike action yeah. uh, the same year in the UK. Yeah. Door, well, it didn't I last do. that long. Yeah. So for us uh, to have actually said, well, they don't go on strike in the UK, looks like, well, they've never been on strike. I didn't say they don't go on strike. I said we pick it. Even when they call the strike, go into the schools. Teachers are teaching. Not all the schools. Not all. No, 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 no. All the school. Some are teaching, some are picketing. All teachers to start with. It's a developed world that people have their own conscience. There are some people that would never be part of strike because they're sold out to their profession. Do you understand? Uh, in all my 20 years of teaching in the UK, I've never been absent in class for once, even when I'm ill, except if it's uh, something that it can, I can give to somebody else. You know, by law, I'm not supposed to come to school if I have a communicable disease. But if I don't, there's no how. And if you don't come to class, you plan for your, you don't want just anybody to take your student through rubbish. They are going to mess up what you've started with them. So these teachers should be, they should be meeting their student behind closed doors and still advancing education. That's what a because, professional because does. Because uh, as a news person, I followed that uh, particular event and I recall that so many classrooms were actually empty in the UK then. And uh, there were no... So many, yes, you said, but yes. not all classrooms. Uh, yes. It's so. not a total, you know, it's not a total block to access to education. That's what we've done. Let's talk about the uh, information. Uh, you said that sometimes the media actually uh, tend to, well, give what I want to call adult treated news concerning the strike action. Yeah. On this particular matter, because we've been going back and forth, and uh, some, especially Chinese television, have actually taken a stand which the government has responded to by saying, show us evidence of payment of this 200 billion naira into the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, perhaps maybe you should just give us an example of what you mean by uh, the media not helping out To be this. quite honest, I'm not going to hit at a particular media house. But I know from experience, for example, I'm the lead consultant for the school safety project, and a child died recently in a quarter along the Lekki Ekpe axis. Up till now, I have not seen that news being reported the way it should be reported. Number one, when such things happen in a, in a developed setting, they will ensure that they look in terms of the um, engineering of the vehicle, what went wrong that morning? Was it that the brakes were not catching? Was it that the guy was negligent? Was it that the children themselves did not um, uh, observe safety when they're crossing? You know, so many things. They will speak to people who are onlookers, who are witnesses at the scene. They'll speak to parents of the of the children, they'll bring experts on television to talk about friction, the day rain that day. The members of the public will learn so much from that single incident. In Nigeria, we don't learn. And that is what I'm saying. They don't report the way I expect. And we look at CNN. We, we see things. I mean, we, we live in a global world now. We have a gateway to what is happening abroad. Why can't we do so? Our journalists are so lazy. They cannot do research and they cannot 
even report properly. They, when you look at Nigerian papers, for example, I see the same kind of language being churned out by these journalists. They speak, they, they report the same way. So basically, it's to me, I don't respect the Nigerian media because number one, you need, you need the envelope before any news will come out. We need, you know, until we, the people who own these media houses, look after their staff you know, so that they don't it's, go out. It's, it's, you know? really, it's really amazing when you say you don't, you have a categorical statement on the Nigerian media that yes. you don't respect them. Because if you say you don't respect them first, uh, you're here without anyone asking you to bring uh, the so-called brown envelope. So if you're here without yeah, asking, that's, that's no, 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 I no, understand. No, I'm not. So you know, you're here, I said that if you're from here, the beginning. I'm, I know. I, I know. said I'm not knocking no, on why, anybody. I know. I'm that's why I'm saying we should be careful general. not to have Listen, a blanket. I won an award in the UK. I, I understand. And we, when my husband went just to one moment, of the Nigerian, just a moment to, here. to give me to give me a kind of um, uh, leverage so that people can read my story, I'm a Nigerian. They should be proud of me. They say I should bring three thousand pounds. And that's the reason why you've never read about my story from the UK when I won that award. Okay, so you can see what I'm talking about. It's already given me a bias. Perhaps, maybe you don't get me. I, I, I'm talking about us not getting into what we call hasty generalization. If you have just one that can actually stand out and say, based on your award or based on what you've done so far and looking at your resume, you have been invited yeah. on a live show yeah. on national television, then I think, well, we should be careful when we say the Nigerian media. Of course. Because well, there are so I, many others who I are understand. actually professional. Even, even abroad, I follow channels on the, um, on the net because it's a breath of fresh air when it started. You know, I like the way they, 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 they zero in on news. You know. you know, on this so matter, so that doesn't look I'm like... I'm not really what, looking at... I'm not knocking people down, but you know what I'm talking about. I understand honestly. you. Uh, but looking at ASU and federal government uh, on this particular strike action, yesterday uh, we finally uh, well, heard from the government and uh, they showed proof that this money has been paid. Yeah. Uh, so what do we expect uh, of ASU at this uh, time that uh, evidence has been shown to the oh, people? They are slowly going back to... To classes because I work closely with a lot of dance as a consultant in one thing or the other and I can tell you categorically that they are going back uh, one by one the dance are resuming you, you know the the, the 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 business of education is not something you can slap like that there are certain administrative processes that needs to to be in place before lessons can Commence. So basically, they are going back to school. I know that Unilag is already sent text messages to their, because some of their students are my mentees. So I know that they've got text messages saying they should come back to school as from yesterday. So basically, I know that they're, that they're going back to school. They don't have any reason not to, because basically right now, it's obvious that the government had made, met their um, their requirement. Well, in, in closing, uh, how would you love us uh, uh, solve uh, these kind of problems in the future so that mm -hmm. we don't get into another prolonged strike action? Yes. Number one, government should increase their investment in education. If they do, they should look after our dons. That is the reason why we don't have any research in Nigeria. We are still sitting on what the white people had done pre-1970s. We don't have funding body that fund researches in this country. We don't look after the welfare of these people, not to talk of even the students themselves. Number one, the teachers or lecturers need to be, to be knowledgeable enough to impart knowledge. They need to be comfortable enough to be able to do these things without glancing backward and looking elsewhere. They need to be totally focused. And our government needs to show Nigerians, because listen, I am sick and tired of government playing lip service to education, because no country can move beyond the threshold of development if they do not invest. And I, I'm saying that 
again, invest heavily in, in education, in the education of their, of their citizen. Because not only will you have citizens who are literates, which helps, because they will help the government to find solution to the so many problems that we have in this country. Problems of infrastructure and development, problem, problems of security, problem of, um, of um, thuggery. We have too many thugs. Why? Because our youth don't have opportunity. Beyond secondary school, what are the options? That's a question. I mean, you, you're talking about what you expect on the side of government. What about the side of ASU? That's what I'm saying. I have nothing. I need to talk about the government first because it, 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 if you have a responsible government, the ASU will not have the gods to do what they're doing. Because, number one, even the society will shut them down straight away. We need to get our dons to a stage whereby they too are not politicized because there's a lot of politics going on. I must say that in this as well. So basically they need to be ethical. You know, there are ethics of this profession that they are not, when anything happens in Nigeria, we throw out the bath, the bathwater with the child in it. That's what we do. They throw out all the ethics of this profession because of one thing. They need to emulate their uh, counterparts abroad. They need to see what is going on. And I even believe that government should get to a stage whereby we, 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 we are pro, proactive when it comes to strike action. I, I will rest it mainly on government. Because if you have a good government, for example, we know that Lagos State is working. And there are places where Fashola can bullshit the people. I, excuse my French. If they are not doing what they are meant to do, it can replace them. It can say, I will replace you. If a government knows that it's doing what it can do, and, it, uh, and we have succession planning, a country that don't have succession planning cannot say we're sacking all the asso. Who, who will take over? There's a big gap between the people in leadership right now and those coming. That's a big dirge, and we need to look into that. There's so many issues, but tackling education in a, in a sensitive manner will definitely give us a knowledge-based economies, for example. We are very brilliant. You go everywhere in the world. Before you name 10 people on top of any field, a Nigerian is there. And this, is, this, is, this should be telling our leaders something. It should be telling them to pay attention to education so that maybe, probably, we can become like Singapore. Because Singapore, just less than 10 years ago, are not part of the world leaders in um, uh, knowledge-based economies. But today, they overhauled their educational system. Well, and well. now we, we go there to learn from them. Even from England, they go there to learn from them. Well, I think a uh, good place uh, for us to wrap up this, uh, this morning, BC Akin Alabi. Uh, many thanks for joining us this morning. She's Thank an you. education consultant, uh, early years learning expert, and lifestyle coach and trainer. Sunrise Delhi will go on a short break, and when we return, do stay with us.